Hey, and welcome back to Gaming for Tokens. I'm Marshall, and in this episode, we're going to be doing something a little different, a little special. Um, I've gotten requests in the past. The effects series on the scripting um, playlist is a request series, technically. Uh, it was requested by someone, and I decided to upload it there. Uh, against my better judgment, I think, because I should have probably started this sooner. This is going to be a new playlist and series, as you probably saw in the opening and thumbnail and all that jazz, called Request Theater. And it's going to be where I'm going to house like little one-off request things that people ask for. The reason why I'm putting them here is because I didn't want to inject, for example, this into the middle of the effects scripting and, and stuff series. Because that'd be kind of weird if I just like went off on a tangent. Or if I had to delay this series, this episode because the other one was taking place and I didn't have time to do both or whatever. Um, so, uh, yeah, this is going to be the playlist that I'm going to house when people ask me to do something or people ask me how I would approach something. And the big disclaimer on the whole thing is going to be that these are not the solutions necessarily, but these are a solution that I have reached. Um, this is just how I approach something. Feel free to adapt on what I'm doing or talk about better ways to do it in the comments below and all that jazz. I'll try to upvote comments as they, as they, uh, filter in if they do i hope they do and yeah so um yeah this is the first episode of request theater um specifically uh and i'm gonna butcher your name i'm absolutely sorry but uh rudra sharma i believe is your name requested how to do a trajectory system so uh for those of you who don't know what that means uh i kind of approached it like uh, angry birds kind of where you you click and you drag, and that sets the um, the trajectory of like an arc of, tra of of trajectory, right? So um, for like launched objects and things like that that use gravity and, and that sort of thing, um, I have a rudimentary system for that set up. At least for one arc, you could do multiples off of this. So you could do like a hit and a bounce, and you could make another uh, trajectory arc. Um, that would be fairly simple to do, but I'm not going to cover that in this episode. I'm just going to cover how to do one. Um, I may or may not upload the scripts for this. Um, it is kind of a heavy-duty thing and can actually be plug-and-play in a game. Typically, I'm going to avoid doing things like that just for reasons of I want you to learn how to do it rather than me just give you the things and then you can go use it. That would be bad. So, um, yeah. But I will be walking you step-by-step -step through the three different scripts. They are right here. Directory calculator, controller, and projectile. Um, those three things I will be walking you through step by step on how I made them, and you can follow along and copy them if you like, but I would prefer that you at least um, copied them so you could learn why I did what I did and how I did what I did. So, cool. Um, so, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, show you exactly what I mean by trajectory calculator. Uh, or a trajectory system or whatever. So if you haven't played Angry Birds, basically the gist is you have an object. This little guy down here is my object. I click on him, I drag, I get a an arc of movement. And um, depending on how I drag, so the farther away I drag from him, the more power I'm applying. So if I drag down, the more power upward I get. If I drag left, the more power uh, to the right I get. And um, if I go down left, then I get a, a very strong arc in a given direction. And if I let go, I fire a projectile in that direction, and it explodes on contact with objects. So this is the system that I'm going to walk you through. Um, you'll notice that I... Uh, oh, and if you don't hit anything, it'll go over there. I don't quite have a system for that hooked up yet. If you see, this thing will just kind of follow its arc all the way down, and then blow up when it hits the end. That's kind of a bad system. <laughs> I don't really handle that. But it, this is at least the um, the system for building an arc. And yeah, so hopefully this will be useful for at least getting someone started. Uh, this is effectively what the ask was for. So yeah, the some of the things that I want to show you are uh, a brief overview of what I'm going to cover. The trajectory calculator calculates this arc. That's all it does. Um, the trajectory controller will calculate, uh, will allow us to apply values to that based on input to get the arc we need. Um, the calculator also is right now controlling the collision, which um, I went back and forth on. I wanted that on the calculator, but I wasn't, or I wanted that on the controller, but the calculator's doing it. Um, I went back and forth on it. Uh, I, I wanted the calculator to be like a pure form calculator thing, and then the controller to manipulate that. I kind of decided that I should put the 
the calculations on the calculator, which would include physics calculations. The projectile is its own thing. It is um, fed the arc from the calculator via the controller and told to move along it at whatever pace we dictate in there, and, and then it explodes and does all that stuff on its own. So yeah, that's kind of the brief overview of what we're going to be covering here. I also do have debug stuff set up on this, so if I grab my launcher and I come down here and I hit debug, uh, you'll see up here in the editor uh, a bunch of like fancy, fancy things appear, um, like the arc that I'm going for and uh, the... Here, hang on. I wonder if it'll... It won't stay. How do I get that to stay? Maybe if I just... Oh no, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna be able to get it to stay. All right. Well, the um, the yellow line is the here. I should probably actually be doing it while I'm explaining it, huh? That might help. So the uh, oh, and I also have to re debug. Um, launcher debug. There we go. So if I do this, the yellow line is the power vector. The cyan line is the arc, obviously, because it follows the arc that I'm in. Notice a frame delay in there because uh, of how debug stuff is run. I try to ignore that. The um, the red line is the input line. That's the amount of uh, reverse input power that I'm running. The red line comes from the, the trajectory controller's debug. The yellow and cyan lines come from the uh, trajectory calculator debug. And then, yeah, I just launched the, the projectile. Projectile doesn't have any debug. We probably put, could, probably could put some in if we wanted to, but yeah, yeah, whatever. It's, uh, I don't think it, I don't think it particularly needed any. Um, and this, for the record, is a three-dimensional. Um, this is a three-dimensional controller. So if I rotate the camera and move it over this way, and I grab this guy, and I do this, it will move in three-dimensional space. I think right now it's still running on a 2D system. I don't really know. Nope, see, there it goes. It's going that way. Oh, yeah, it's still running 2D because the camera's 2D. You could rig this up to be 3D, though. Uh, for example, if I grab the launcher and I manipulate the inputs, which I can't do, it is a three-dimensional thing. It works in three dimensions right now. I have it set up to work in two. Um, so it, it can work for whatever your needs are. Uh, and then I'm going to move this guy back and this guy to negative 15. And I might pull it in a little bit to there. Negative 10. Negative 10. There we go. Cool. So, yeah, uh, let's start looking at code, I guess. Now that we're seven minutes in, and I haven't started yet. <laughs> um, great. So, hopefully, if... Um, you'll notice that I haven't commented any of this yet. Uh, there's a good reason for that. I don't plan on uploading this, like I said. Uh, I'm, I might, but I don't think I will. If I do, then this will be very different looking, and it will have comments in it, because I like doing that. It'll also have copyright notices and things like that in it. Um, but yeah, this is the code in its raw form for you to look at. So this is the trajectory calculator. So uh, effectively what I wanted to do was um, I wanted to create an arc. So I wanted to create this arc based off of a straight line direction vector. That straight line direction vector being the, the line from this circle to my cursor. That's the direction that I wanted the arc to go in, and I wanted it to have gravity. That's how it falls off, um, and I wanted, yeah, that's basically it. Um, the things, some of the things that I wanted to know about it. So, for example, uh, I have subdivisions here. I should probably just go over this really quick, huh? Well, trajectory calculator. So I have my collision mask. You know what that does if you've seen my collision videos, uh, which if you haven't yet. That'll be helpful to see before this. And I have these subdivisions here, and if I set this to ten, you'll notice that the this is janky looking um, sometimes it's sort of janky looking because when I do that it looks a little better or worse or whatever but um, and then this thing is going to follow that path right so this subdivisions is actually um, how many points along the arc I want to be represented in 3d space so if I do um, three this will look really awful it'll look kind of like that and this will go doop 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 because I'm only um, reading three positions. I'm reading this one, this one, and this one. If I do five, I'm suddenly now looking at these five positions. One, two, three, four, five. So uh, this is how many positions along the, along the arc I care about. That's why I have it at 60 in, 
in here. So if I do 60, then I get a nice smooth fluid arc. And that's a, because um, there's there's 60 locations along the, this arc. Not this arc necessarily, we'll get to that in a minute. But if I wanted to do this, there are 60 different locations here along the this uh, this arc. And that will give this a, a smooth looking path to go along. Even though it is segmented 60 times. Uh, yeah. There's a max dist, which is the distance from the start of this all the way to the end of this. So between each, effectively the way that I'm, I'm calculating this is the distances between each of the segments I add up until I hit this value. And when I hit that value, I stop creating the arc. So if I increase this to five, you'll see that this will be quite a bit longer when I create an arc. It goes all the way down to there now. And if I make it here, we will, um, if I make it six, it'll go all the way down to there. So it goes even farther and farther and farther out. It's so far off that it's off screen. So see like this guy's gonna end right about here and the other arc goes down that much farther. So that uh, max distance there actually controls how far the arc will go over its, in over its entire length. It's not the distance from here to the end, it's the distance along the arc. Um, yeah, the, the gravity is how fast it falls off, so a demo of that would be, uh, this is 9.8, which is actual gravity, right? If I decrease this to five, then this is, uh, it, I basically have, um, there's less downward force, so power will get me farther. Um, it's really just a personal preference thing. You can modify gravity however you like. Uh, it won't really change a whole lot <laughs> for me. If I change it to one, for example, um, yeah. Boop. Yeah, I don't know why that that's, I don't know why that's modifying the max disk. There might be a bug in my code that we might have to figure out here because that's not right. Maybe I'm using gravity like max distance. That would be weird, right? It looks like I am. It absolutely looks like I am. That is a nightmare. I've been wondering why, because this is much longer than four. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Anyway. Uh, oh, this is going to be a two-part series, by the way, if I didn't mention. So anyway, that's kind of what all these do. Power is my, um, my facing power stat. So if I control this... And I say you're going to be 10 and 10. And I'm debugging this. I can kind of see what things are. This is what I mean by it's a three-dimensional system. Like I'm moving along the Z and the, the X axis. So this is 10, 10, and 10. And um, that's the arc that it generates from my power. And I can test out like the subdivisions and how that affects things. And so like there's your different... Um, should be 10, should be, whoa, 11, should be 12, should be 13, should be, so yeah, you can um, use the debug and the power and stuff to figure out uh, how to debug this. And then if I click, it'll actually launch it in that direction. So it is a three dimensional system, like I was saying. Um, yeah, cool. Uh, yeah, so that's the trajectory calculator on the surface, and now we can go to this. So I have all my flags that you just that we just went over. Uh, I did have object drag at one point, and I decided against that. I might hook that up. If I do upload this, I will hook that up, and you can play with that in your spare time. Basically, what that's going to do is it's going to apply a... Um, so like right now, we have a downward force that is gravity that is pulling this down, but we would have a second uh, force that would be the drag of the object pushing it this way so it would compress the arc down it would um yeah that's all it would do um yeah but i decided against including that for this demo because it just made things overly complicated so right now i'm just gonna do that all right we have our power which defaults to zero and then we have the two really really important things which are the trajectory divs uh which is divisions and the trajectory locs which is locations and i should have made this ders for directions but i didn't um, the, tra the trajectory divs is going to be the facing angle at every single one of the points. So, here. Whoa. So if I do this, um, and I actually I need to decrease the subdivisions on this so I can see what I'm doing a little. 
So we will do this guy here like that. All right, so at the at each one of these locations along the archway, along the arc, I have a direction stored here uh, facing where what direction I am uh, going next. So this guy is pointed this way, this guy is pointed this way, and this one's pointed this way, so on, so on, so on. Um, if I wanted to, I could probably uh, debug this. So let's uh, debug, draw a line. Uh, we should draw a ray. Draw a ray. And then this is going to be um, our location that we're going to be drawing it from. And this is going to be our direction. And we're going to say trudge divs slot i and we're going to make this not cyan we'll make this i don't know color dot gray i suppose we'll see how that looks so this is going to give us um each one of those little locations yeah there we go so this is 60 of them and that's a lot uh, so maybe we shouldn't be doing that. We should probably, probably, probably boil this down to like 8 again. Um, yeah. So you see um, that guy. 10, 10, 10. So yeah, each one of these uh, locations has a direction off of it, right? So and it points the direction that it came from. So we start off going up like that. We start, Then we, we change to going that way, that way, that way, that way. And this is what builds the arc, right? Because from here to here and here to here and here to here... Um, eventually that'll form an arc, an arch like we want. We're just trying to figure out the locations and then the directions in which we should keep traveling to go to those locations. So we start here and we travel along this, vec uh, this vector to the next location. Then we travel along this vector to the next location. Then we travel along this vector to that location. Then this vector to that location. This vector to that location and so on, so on, so on. So um, yeah, that's kind of how that works. And I might actually, uh, I'm going to go ahead and change this to times 0.25. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, thank you. Times 0.25, F. Um, that'll shorten those debug lines so that we can see that a little better in the future. So we 10, 10, and 10. Oh, please, come on, come on. Yeah, there we go. Now we can kind of see those. Um, so these are tad better. Subdivisions 8. Try that again, and you'll see what I mean. Boop. Yeah. So now we have those little, uh, those little gray ticks to show us where we're, what direction we're going in. Great. Um, uh, gonna, gonna, gonna zero this out, and bring this back up to 60. Save and go back to this. All right. Great. So that's our, our divs are our, um, the directions, those gray, uh, direction vectors. And then the locations are the points at which we want, essentially our vertices, right? The points along our arch that make it make it up. Um, on update, what we want to do is if our subdivisions are greater than zero, so uh, if we, actually we should probably make this greater than two because we don't want to do this if we, uh, we, we can only draw an archway with three points, right? And then we have a triangle. We can't draw an archway with two points because that's a straight line. We can't draw an archway with um, an arch with one either because that's impossible. That's a one-dimensional object. It's not capable of two dimensions. So we only want to do this if we have subdivisions of two or greater. Uh, and we only want to do this if our max disk is greater than zero because, uh, again, if we have a max disk of zero, that means we can't go anywhere. We can't create an arch. That's still a single point even though we've specified more than those subdivisions. So we don't want to do that either. And we uh, only want to do this if our power is greater than zero. Um, so basically what I'm saying here is if we're creating an arch, right? If we have the proper prerequisites in which to make an archway, we should try to do so. Um, all right, great. So the first thing we want to do is get a temporary trajectory that is our power. So that's going to be, um, we're basing that off of this vector here. So that's kind of why I can take this and uh, specify a power in here and get an arch, way, or an arch out of it. So if I do 10, 10, and 10 again, I get an arch out of this uh, because I am specifying a vector, which is this guy here. This is this yellow line. Um, 
So uh, we want to set that as our temporary trajectory. That's going to be our first trajectory. So then we're going to make our new lists for our um, our divs and our locations. Our divs are going to be uh, we're going to make a list equal to the number of subdivisions we have because that's why we have that. That's why we have this. So we can figure out how many vertices along the arch we want. So we do that, and then we set our uh, temporary position for where we're going to start the arch uh, to be this thing's position. We could, in theory, have a, a transform here that we drive this script using something else. So, like, for example, that's probably what you're going to want to do. Um, typically, I would say, like, public transform muzzle look. And um, then I would use this in here. Come on, come on, please. There we go. Muzzle look dot position. The reason why I would uh, you'd want to do this is if you're getting the directory of an object. So like, say that you have like a cannon object, and you attach this script to the cannon. It'll draw the trajectory from wherever the cannon's pivot is located, and that's bad. You usually want to, or usually bad, unless the pivot of the cannon is in the exact location you want the shot to come out of. So usually that's not the way you want to do things. Typically, you'd want to. Um, to specify a location in which to draw the archway from, right? So, yeah, that's how you would do that is with this muzzle look. Um, I didn't do that because I'm just using a ball. I don't care <laughs> about that. So, yeah. Um, that specifies our starting position. And then from here, we're going to say that the first location in both of our divs and locations is our power and our our position. Again, it, we would um, you'd probably actually want to use temp trajectory and temp pose for both of these because you just set those and you might as well use them. Um, plus that means that if you ever do change it to like muzzle location, you only change it once and it fixes the problem, right? Um, great. So we set the starting values of our lists to be the starting values of uh, what we're going to be using to calculate our arch from. All right, now we go into the crucial for loop for this thing. We're gonna go through each step of the trajectory locations because they're going to be um, they're the same length and we know this because we set it the same thing right so uh, we can just go we can use one as a reference for length instead of both because we they're the same thing so uh, we're gonna go through the steps for each of our tra tra trajectory locations and we're going to set our temporary trajectory to be um, itself modified by gravity uh, Oh, vector field down times gravity times max sticks divided by subdivisions. So this is why our gravity was affecting the locations of our points. Interesting. I might have to look at this and fix it. Um, if I do that, then I'll, I'll mention it in part two. But the gist what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to say that um, we need to modify our trajectory, which is the angle that we are starting off at. We need to modify that by gravity. So we're going to say vector three or vector three dot down, which is direction down, times gravity, which is uh, nine point eight. So we're going to add gravity to that um, that trajectory. Uh, but we want to multiply that by the amount of distance we are traveling. Hmm. Maybe we don't want to do that. Maybe if I just take this out, this will work. Uh, vector three dot down times gravity. Let's see if let's see what that does. I mean, we might as well, right? It's not going to break anything. No, it probably will. So script will re-import, and then it'll recalculate this thing. Alrighty. So that's what gravity does. Um, and now, if I specify a higher power, like fifty, 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 we get an arch like that. Okay, yeah, so that didn't really break anything. That's just interesting. Let's rain our max distance a little bit to like three, to like one. See, that's so weird. Oh, maybe it's modifying the max dist between each thing. Ah, sorry I came unprepared for this. This is just just the worst. Anyway, um, yeah, so it looks like yeah, okay, cool. So, 
Sorry, uh, just trying to figure some stuff out here. So we're modifying our trajectory by gravity. So we're saying vector three dot down times gravity. We want to add that to it. So vector three dot down looks like this as a refresher. It's going to be zero comma negative one comma zero. So this is down. This is vector three dot down. And we're going to take that. And we're going to multiply it by gravity. What that's probably going to end up with, given our current values of gravity being nine point eight, is zero comma negative nine point eight comma zero. So it's going to take this and it's going to add it to whatever our current trajectory is, which at the moment is 10, 20, 10. So we're going to take this and we're going to um, add it to that. And what we're going to end up with is 10, uh, what is that? Um, 0.2, so 19. Whoa, I can't do math right now. Why can't I do math right now? I'm going to say 10 minus 9.8, except plus 10 because we're 20. So wait, hold on. 20 minus 9.8. There we go. It's going to be 10.2. Wow, I couldn't do that in my head for some reason. Um, so 10.2 uh, <laughs> and then 10. So this is what we're going to get out of it. And that's going to be our uh, second location, right? That's going to be our second vector. Um, yeah, that's how that works. And then uh, we're going to set that as our temporary trajectory for this slot in the array. The next thing we're going to do now is we're going to say our temporary position is going to be uh, modified by our trajectory. So we're going to say trajectory going forward. We want to go that direction for max disk divided by subdivisions. So we're going to move forward the number of our, our distance equal to how far we total want to go divided by how many segments we have. Um, this might be another place that our, our max dist is messing with our, our array. Um, but I don't, I don't know that that's necessarily true. So we'll see. But, and again, I might modify this and change it for the next video, but so then we're going to store that as our next position, and then we're going to do that all again. We're going to keep doing this. Um, so effectively what we're doing is we are uh, getting this trajectory, and we're moving forward a distance based off of our, our max distance, which is this, divided by the chunks that we have. So we're going to move forward this amount, and then we're going to um, modify our trajectory again to being this direction and then we're going to move forward this amount and then we're going to modify our trajectory again to this and we're going to move forward that amount off that trajectory we're going to keep doing that and keep doing that until we've reached our mass our mass max distance blah um which we haven't done in here quite yet we're only going our length the idea being that once we um have moved forward this amount uh once we move forward max dist uh, times or oh maybe that's what it is max is time subdivisions yeah interesting okay cool so that's our bug right there our bug is right here and I will fix that in the next video and tell you how to fix it but once we move forward um, a number of times equal to our max distance um, we will be done because that's this many that is the however many subdivisions we have um, and then in the end, we're going to check for collision, which I will talk about in the next video because we are already running up against our half hour mark, which is what I want to keep this video to. And then we um, do our debug stuff, which is all of our lines and all that jazz. But this right here is pretty much the bulk of uh, how to build trajectory. We just um, move forward along a, a vector and then we modify it by gravity, whatever we want that gravity to be. Um, also, for the next video, I might make this not a float value. I might make this a vector value. And that might make things a little easier to calculate here. That being gravity, by the way. Um, if I make it a vector value, then we can have gravity that goes up, for example. Which is something that we can't... Well, we can have vector... We can have gravity going up, but we can't have gravity going left, for example. So, um, yeah. I kind of want to have that set up. And, uh, yeah. So, I'm going to change this a little bit. I'm going to fix that bug. I'm going to explain how I fixed it and what I fixed and what I changed. And I'll circle back with you in the next video. But for now, um, this should get you at least started in being able to build a trajectory system. And if you have built it and fixed the problems that I'm having, um, you should comment before the next video goes up. And we can kind of compare notes and see how we went about it. But yeah, the collision stuff is down here. If you want to take a look at this and take a stab at it, go right ahead. Um, I'm basically just going through my entire loop and seeing um, I'm... 
going between these different points and I'm doing a, a line cast from here to here and I'm seeing if I hit anything and then I'm keep I do that all the way down the, the length of it it's part of the benefit of having a series of points and vectors is that it makes doing this really really quick and easy I do all of that right uh, here wait right here this is my entire ray cast check for my entire arch because it's just a for loop and then if I hit something then I modify my lists that's the complicated part is mo calling back my lists and changing my positions based off of what I hit so yeah uh, hopefully this was helpful and again this is only part one there will be a part two coming out sometime soon I'm gonna modify my scripts and come right back to uh, make another video so yeah thanks for watching and uh, bye bye